Hi, I'm Kristen and today I'm going to be doing a review of In Stylish Makeup Sponges. So if you're looking for a good, cheaper alternative to some of the more expensive makeup sponges out there, stay right here. So In Stylish sent me a package of these two makeup sponges to review. I'm not an affiliate of theirs, they just asked me to review their product. So these have some little differences to them. As you can see, this one is kind of domed all the way around with the pointed tip, and then it's got one flat side here. This one has a rounded bottom, pointed tip here, a larger flat side, and a smaller flat side. So they're both going to be good for a little bit different uses, but I'd still say both would be good for kind of your everyday makeup routine. Their website said that they had this microfiber on the outside that would help you get more of a smooth airbrushed look and would reduce the amount of product that was soaked up by the sponge. We're also going to be trying a damp and a dry sponge because their website said that it could be used both ways. So first thing I'm going to do is just use my regular Huda Beauty Faux Filter Foundation and try it with both wet and dry and just kind of see how it does. So just like normal, I'm just going to take about one squirt on the finger, spread it all around. And we'll start with the damp one. As you can see, these were the same size when they came in. When you get it damp, it expands a lot. So you can see the size difference here. So it's also a lot softer when it's damp. I'm not sure if you can really tell, but this one's a lot denser. And this one expands and gets really soft. So we're just going to start blotting that on. So the point really allows you to get right below the eye really well, so it's good. Definitely a nice smooth finish, no problems there. I'm going to try the dry on the other side. It works okay with the blending, but I can already tell that it's picking up, soaking up more product than the damp one. So I'm just going to continue to use the damp one. Both can be used damp, so this is just my preference. If you prefer a dry one, go for it. Okay, so there's our foundation. I wouldn't say that as far as coverage and how smooth the application is that I noticed a huge difference between this product and more expensive sponges like the Beauty Blender, but it's definitely better than some cheaper sponges that I've tried. It was pretty quick to use. I actually really liked the size that it was when it was damp. It was really easy to hold on to. The point on both sponges, really good for getting in small areas like right under the eyes or the creases next to the nose, and also getting precision up by the eyebrows. As for whether or not it absorbed any more or less product than other sponges, kind of hard to tell by applying. I didn't notice much difference. I definitely wouldn't say that it absorbed any more than any other sponges, but I don't know that I would say it absorbed less without having a more precise way to test that. So now I'm going to go ahead and move on to concealer. So I'm using my Mary Kay Perfecting Concealer. And I'm just going to put it below my eyes. And we'll go ahead and do a little bit on the nose, forehead, and 
and chin as well. I'm going to stick with the damp one, just my preference. Okay, no problem blending there. I actually did notice this time that it maybe does absorb a little bit less product than some of my other makeup sponges because I applied the amount that I'm used to and when I started blending it, it was way thicker than what I typically do and I had to blend it out a little more than normal, which could be because my makeup sponges are typically absorbing a little bit more, so I may have to actually use a little bit less with these ones. So that would be a big plus. The only thing that I didn't love was when this one is damp, like I said, it does get so big, which I like for gripping onto, but when I tried to get in the very corners of my eyes, it was a little big to get in there. I always touch up my mascara on the bottom after I do my concealer, but may have to do just a little bit more with this one. So there may be just a little bit less precision for doing just this very inner corner here. So maybe in the future I would use the dry one for that. A little easier to get in there when it's still this small. So now I'm going to try my setting powder. So I'm using the e.l.f. Perfect Finish. And for this I'm going to use the dry one. I prefer a dry beauty blender for powders like this. And I'm trying out the larger flat side. And I'm just going to put this below the eye. And that's the only spot I'm going to try for now. Normally I wouldn't do any other spots until after I contour. Then I'm going to give that a few minutes to set and then we're going to wipe off the excess with a brush and see how that did. Definitely more precision using the dry one and I really liked the flat side for applying it right under the eye. For smaller areas, this little flat side would be great. I always like to do a little bit kind of under my contour so that would be good for those small lines there. So the other thing I will say, I tried this one when I was doing a Halloween look and I actually used white face paint in it and it was so easy to clean it. Obviously it's this dark color, you can totally see the foundation all over it so you can really tell where the product is. So I had white face paint all over it and I just put it under running water in the sink and just had to squeeze it a few times and it was all completely gone. It was probably the easiest makeup sponge cleaning that I've done, so I really liked the amount of time that that saved me. You don't get that dry product in there from previous times applying makeup, so that was a pretty solid plus there. Okay, so I've given that powder a few minutes to set, so now I'm just going to take a powder brush here and wipe off the excess. Okay, so as far as I can tell just by looking, there's really not any kind of difference in how smooth the application of the setting powder is based on other sponges, so I wouldn't say that there's any kind of huge pull one way or the other there. It looks pretty much the same, but I definitely think everything has a nice smooth finish to it. It's possible that it's soaking up less product based on what we saw with the concealer, and then I really love how easy to wash off it is. I definitely really liked the dry one for setting powder, lots of precision, obviously since it's not wet it didn't clump it up or kind of affect the consistency of the powder. And then I really liked the wet one for applying liquid products like the foundation and concealer. Definitely got a nice smooth finish, I was happy with it. I don't want to misquote their prices, but back when I looked at their website I believe the package that had these two sponges was in the $10 ballpark. So compared to some other sponges, that's a pretty good price. 
So I would definitely recommend it. Easy to clean, nice smooth finish. I couldn't find anything that made me think any of the more expensive sponges that I used were better than these. So I definitely think they're a solid alternative to any makeup sponge you could be using. So if you're looking for some makeup sponges that are a little more inexpensive but still high quality, I was very happy with these and I'll be continuing to use them in my makeup routines. So I highly recommend giving them a try. Thank you for watching this video today and thank you for liking, commenting, and subscribing. Bye!